In this video, you will learn what influence the internal resistance of a battery of a real voltage source has on the voltage level that's actually available for a circuit or for a component in a circuit. We will conduct an exercise and we will look at a car battery and check whether it is able to power both the starter motor and the car lights at the same time. And by the end of this video, you will know why the internal resistance is such an important variable to describe the performance of a battery and why in many circuit diagrams, an ideal voltage source is not sufficient to correctly describe the behavior of a circuit. And by the end, of course, there's going to be a sample solution of this problem for, uh, made from me for you to check against your own results. My name is Andreas from The Fearless Engineer and here we go. Well, let's take a look at the task which you need to solve in this, in this exercise here. The open circuit voltage of a car battery is given with 12 volts. Then we have an internal resistance of this car battery. We have talked about parameters which describe batteries in previous videos. So the internal resistance for this car battery is at 50 milliohms. And if the starter of the vehicle is operated, then the connected load resistance is at resistance L, RL, L for load, 0, 0 0.3 ohms. So this is the resistance of the vehicle starter and it's powered by the battery, which is described by these two parameters here. And the first task is to calculate the maximum current of the rechargeable battery if no load is connected. What's the maximum current the battery can provide? Then secondly, calculate the terminal voltage of this battery under load, which means when RL is, is connected. Then thirdly, calculate whether the starter motor can still be operated with the lighting system switched on in addition um, to the vehicle starter and this is given with one ohm of resistance and please take note of the fact that the um, starter requires at least an operating voltage of nine volts so you need to find out whether the starter motor still works because it needs nine volts to start and when the lighting system is also switched on then this might take away um, some some voltage from 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 the battery and the lighting system which you should also note is arranged in parallel to the to the starter so you can imagine i think the circuit how, how, it, lo how it looks like consisting of three components battery vehicle starter and lighting system and you should now try to solve all these three exercises here the tasks and you will find the sample solution on the next slide so please pause the video now make sure you do your own calculations first and then afterwards once you unhit pause again then i will show you my sample solution so please hit pause now and good luck with the exercise Let's take a look at my sample solution for task number one. The task was to calculate the maximum current of the rechargeable battery without a connected load. And the maximum current is given to us by the short circuit current. And the short circuit current, even though it should not be measured, especially not with a car battery, it can be calculated from two, from two parameters. The first is the open circuit voltage and the second one is the internal resistance. So this gives you the short circuit current. And the short circuit current for this particular battery is 12 volts divided by 0.05 ohms, which is 240 amps. That's the theoretically maximally possible current flow which the car battery can generate. And this also gives you the reason why you should not fool around with car batteries because the currents which can flow from such a battery are really large. And this can be a very dangerous value, even if combined with a comparatively uh, low voltage of only 12 volts. So 240 amps is the max which the car battery can supply. Then let's take a look at sample solution number two, which is to calculate the terminal voltage of the battery under load, if a load is connected. And the circuit diagram with a battery and a starter looks like this. It's an unbranched circuit with the perfect um, voltage uh, source within the battery in this model. Um, it's of, of, of a size of 12 volts. Then we have the internal resistance, 50 milliohms. Then we have the starter itself, it's 300 milliohms. And that's the, the circuit which we need to use for our calculations now. And based on this circuit, we can now simply compute the load current by dividing the, um, the voltage of the internal perfect voltage source by the resistance of these two resistors connected in series, which is simply the sum of the two. We have made a video on, on connecting resistors in series. And if you have watched it, um, you will know that you simply have to sum up the, the, the separate values here, 50 milliohms plus 300 milliohms, which has been done here um, in the, deno in the deno denominator. And this gives you a current of 34.3 amps, which the starter draws from the battery. 
And now we get to task number three, which is to compute whether the starter motor can still be operated if the lighting system here on the right is also switched on and thus uh, attached in parallel to the starter, uh, which you can see here. So we now have an expanded circuit. It's a branched circuit and um, the resistor, the load resistor number two with one ohm is in parallel to the load resistor number one with 0 0.3 ohm. And the question is, is the voltage drop across the across the starter motor still sufficient to power this device here and let's find out and in order to do this uh, let's quickly compute the overall resistance value of the two load resistors and if you have watched the video on how to compute the total resistance of a parallel setup you know that you simply have to sum up the inverse values of the individual resistances and then compute um, and, and then invert the result again which gives you an overall resistance of 0 0.23 ohms for this setup here consisting of two resistors and uh, if you combine it in series with the internal resistance of the battery which is at 50 milliohms you get an overall resistance of 0 0.28 ohms for this entire setup here. This is the first step in task number three. And then what you can do now is you can apply the voltage divider and the voltage divider, if you have watched this video on how to um, compute the voltage split across several components in a circuit, then you know that you have to multiply the total voltage with the fraction or with the ratio of the resistor which you are looking for, which is the load resistor L12 means the combined resistance here of these two um, divided by the overall resistance. And the combined resistance is 0 0.23 ohms and the overall resistance, including the 50 milliohm resistor of the internal battery, um, is 0 0.28 ohms. And this gives us this uh, multiplication and division gives us an overall voltage drop across this uh, resistor here of, of 9.86 volts. And as both resistors have, an, uh, have, have the same voltage drop across them due to the fact that they share the upper and the lower junction point, we can say that the starter motor under these conditions can still be operated. So the answer is yes, because this voltage which we have computed here is above this threshold of nine volts. So um, the car is going to start if these conditions are met. That's all for now. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video, please drop me a comment down below. And now I wish you a nice day. See you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.